No, you're 100 percent right. WWE had from 2002 to 2017 ish to dominate that landscape, right? And what did they do? They they lessened the audience every year that yeah. had been since both ECW and WCW closed. But I think where people still have that rooting against AEW is because of maybe the culture around AEW. And we'll get into that too. But I think just people see AEW and instantly think, you know, there's a perception around the people involved with AEW that doesn't translate well to their interests. Okay. So I'll just say, you know, the snowflake, the SJW, that, that aura, that attitude of more of a, uh, roster of up and coming talent, people who follow, look, got to remember this. Everybody who watches wrestling now is online, basically following these guys 24 seven. So when they see what they're doing outside of AEW in their personal life, it's carrying over into watching AEW. And I think that that's what's hurt them in the long run. You know, it, it, people just can't get behind some of the support are the people inside the company. Now this is, this is my little part of it, you know, and, and look, if AEW called me tomorrow to work for them, I would absolutely consider <laughs> it, and probably do it. Right. And I've looked at jobs with them and I've, I've been this close to submitting for jobs that they've had available. But I also think that the guy at the top is, is, is turning away fans more than even people on his roster. And that's why people want to crap on AEW. He's, it, it's like, he's playing, boss on uh, when he brings in front of a camera and i just i think that he deters a lot of people from getting into the product but again proof is in the pudding and this picture i have in our background is unbelievable and i love that i, I as much as i might not be into wrestling period right now i love seeing that because that's a production spectacle and it's amazing for everybody who was in the building that night so you're saying tony khan is is rubbing fans the wrong way with his managerial uh, overall you know, of the company trying to be more so one of the boys than a boss. Yes. But then, you know, like not having a backbone in some instances, perception, well, perception. Okay. Let's talk about that. So over the weekend, you have this elaborate pay-per-view that draws over 81,000 paid. So they're saying, right. Beautiful scene. You, we're looking at the picture now. Everybody, you know, gets a chance to showcase themselves and front of thousands and thousands of people that being taken away by a backstage fight that happens between CM Punk and Jack Perry right now I've read so many accounts of what happened and none of them are the same I wasn't there so I don't know what actually happened but the gist of it was weeks ago there was an instance where uh, Jack Perry and Hook had a match. Uh, I'm sorry, who did he work with? No, they had a they they had a match. They had a street fight. Uh, Jack. Okay, and, we um, wanted to use real glass. Was this yeah. a couple weeks ago? Oh, he the wanted, thing. Oh, that part. I don't know who that match is with. No, I was saying the. It was the, it was Jack Perry with somebody. I don't know if it was Hook. I can't remember who the other person was. He wanted to use real glass, and Punk went up to him. This is what I re read and said, we don't do that, pal. You can get yeah, hurt. We don't do that somebody, on Saturday nights, meaning. If somebody could get hurt. Right. Um, Take that to the B show or some, yeah, some kind take of. That. So he's saying we don't do it on Saturday nights, meaning do it on Dynamite where whatever. they don't give a shit. Okay. Um, and he was adamant about using real, real, you know, the real glass or whatever. Now, I guess they did not use it that evening. At the pay-per-view, uh, before All In goes live. Jack Perry has a match with Hook and uses the car window and it was real glass. Now, I read two different stories. I read that he looks at the camera while he's out working and says something like, it's real glass. Yeah, he does. Crime he does. the river. Yeah. The second story I heard, he came through the curtain and went up in Punk's face and said, it's real glass, crime the river. So I don't know which one is true because I didn't see his. his he did back. say it on the pay per view. No, he looks right in the camera. Did he or the say it in the back as well to so start the, punk? What I heard in the back was is then that you know there they, when he came to the back there was an exchange of words. So I don't know what was said. Okay, he could have said the same so, thing. Right. So then reading the two articles, 
I read that Punk watches the monitor, sees Jack say that on camera. He goes up to him as soon as he comes in the, through the curtain and he starts. But then the other article says that Jack goes up to Punk and says it in his face. Right. So that's who what initiated I mean, yeah. the fight? I don't know. It sounds like it sounds like Perry. It sounds like everything that gone on with Punk is he's not in the aggressor mode, but he's on the defensive, which becomes aggressive. Mm -hmm. So, and Jack Perry then apparently, you know, got in his face through a punch. I heard there was punches thrown. And he ended up getting choked out. <laughs> he put him in a choke, yeah. But, again, like, do you do that on the biggest night of the year for your company? Isn't that a bit selfish? Can't Yeah, by Jack Perry. Yeah, like don't like I'm sorry. Like I I would never take something out and go into business for myself in the ring on camera. I would rather solve it in the back. He's taking away you know everybody's moment yep. in a sense because most of the time when you look at uh you know the the um social media accounts now they're talking about the fight they're not talking about the pay-per-view right and that's a shame for everybody involved and and to me that was really a selfish thing to do you know mm -hmm. i can understand his frustration and wanting to do something but it, look at it this way too how many years has jack been in the business compared to punk yeah only a few. who's the vet yeah only a few only a few so, you know, me coming up into the business, I was taught respect the vets in the business. You know, if, if you have something that you want to do and they tell you don't do it, you don't do it. You don't just say, oh, well, screw you. I'm going to go do it and then cut a promo when you're not supposed to and get heat. Like, I, I don't know. Like th these younger guys, they're just going into business for themselves constantly from what I hear, it's not right. And if it goes back to what you said about Tony Khan, just letting it like they used to, Oh, let the inmates run the asylum kind of deal. And he's not, you know, putting his foot down. Yeah. That's on him too. Like, and then I heard uh, Tony, <laughs> this was kind of funny to me. He, he wears the headset, right? So when the punk situation, he was pissed Tony was looking at him, but couldn't hear what he was saying. He was supposedly giving him like thumbs up, like, yeah, uh, when in reality he was going off. Another thing I read. Now, again, I don't know. If, I, I, I don't know that if that's too. true or not. I want to believe that one. I it like could that, be. I, I mean, that could I want to believe. Him standing there with, with the thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, I could he because thinks... he's, he's, he's not like, you know, the first thing I saw was the, the press conference that he came out, he had the cup in his hand, right? He's always got the cup. He's working the gimmick. He's got the cup, right? It's like sunglasses and a uh, hat, right? He's got this cup with him all the time. He's always got this in his hand. Like he's got this coffee or something, whatever it is in the cup. I don't know. But <laughs> it, it, he's so focused on wanting to be at that level of playing boss. But and I'm gonna go on. it's his company. Right, but it, it comes off like he's playing. It doesn't come off like he's serious. It comes off like, oh, la, la, la. Now I gotta go out and do a press conference. Oh, CM Punk, that was mm. bad. Oh, Jack Perry, that was bad. Jack Perry. Here's what I'll tell you what I've heard about Jack Perry on the side. The guy has an ego. The guy thinks he's way far above where he's at in the business because He's in that click. He's in that, like, where the over guys click of AEW. And outside of AEW, I've heard he's carried himself like a like an asshole. And the wrong guy to mess with and the wrong guy to talk back to yeah. is CM Punk. A guy who's got a history of being a little bit of a loose cannon backstage and a guy who's not going to shy away from telling you his real feelings right. uh, about you. Because I'm sure... They've already had some sort of ill exchanges of facials backstage. And Punk has probably just been waiting for that one opportunity that he got over the weekend. But, yeah, I've heard nothing but but Jack Perry's a diva. Jack Perry's got an, an, an absolute ego that's going out of control for a guy that, guess what, Jungle Boy? Pre-show, not pay-per-view. <laughs> that's a big thing. Got to remember yet. that. Not yet. Um. 
story circulating also there was supposedly a suspension for both of them and then somebody debunked that and said well neither party heard of a, a, a suspension yet so you know is tony khan going to step up and say hey this this is not tolerated he needs to make an example for the rest of the locker room i think a hundred percent because this is just going to keep carrying on and then what's he going to build a third a third night or a fourth night but he's for, to, for everybody who doesn't get along and but he's got to they got to make the example of somebody else and not always be yes punk is involved but it can't be punk again you cannot take punk off your television they need to make an example now with yes. this this yes um you you don't you don't fight on the biggest year you don't cause trouble for the rest of the company on the biggest year, uh, you know, uh, the biggest uh, pay-per-view of the year. You just don't do that. It's selfish. And it takes away from everything else that you've worked so hard for. And man, I just, uh, reading these articles, I just get so angry. Because I do have friends there. And I do talk to people. And I do hear stuff that happens that I don't say. Because I'm not, you know, it's not my place to repeat what I hear. It's just two friends having conversations. But I'm just like, my God, this never happened back in in, in our company. Like, right. And I can't even say, but, but I can't even say, hey, Francine, did you ever see this on the night of a pay-per-view? Well, I've you, never heard any stories I, like that out I've of you. I've seen fights. I'm not going to say it was 100% all rosy and everybody, you know, we held hands and skipped down the street. That's not how it was. People did have egos. People got a little out of control. But I think the way we were brought up in the business, we knew how to control our, you know, emotions and our anger and when to take it out at the right time. You know, it, it was never in the ring. Um, now, you do hear stories about okay, I got potatoed once. You give the guy the Iggy, don't do it again. Well, he did it again. I got potatoed twice. I'll give you one more strike. Strike three, you're out. I'm going to potato him back. That kind of stuff I've heard so many times, but there was never a fight in the back about it. It was just like, I'm sorry, brother. I got a little aggressive out there, blah, 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 because some people lose their minds when they're in the ring. And I understand that part. Um, but if two people have a problem and they have to work together, you either solve it or you, you simply don't work together anymore. And that's, that's it. You need to go to your boss. You need to have a sit down or you need to just sit down with that person and, and be men or women about it and say, listen, this isn't working. How do we make it work? If we can't get along, you don't create a second show. You just don't work with each other. anymore. <laughs> you know, and that's a shame because certain people together are money. You're there to draw money. That's the bottom line. You love your craft, but why are you working? To make money, right? Yeah. So if you're going to have these, uh, you know, hissy fits and act like a baby, you need to get more than a slap on the wrist. And you need to be made an example of so that the other people don't follow suit and, and act like this. It's childish. It really is. And for the amount of money that these guys are making, just shut up and do your job, man. You know? They're making good money there. And there are so many guys that would kill to have their spots. And they're just, I mean, it's one of these days, it's just going to blow up in their face. And if Tony ever gets some balls and says, you know, I can't deal with you anymore. You're fired. What is that person going to do? Think about no, it. They no, think they're untouchable. You that's know, the problem. The that's law. the problem. That's that, the problem. That's what it is. They're they're okay, granted they're rock stars. Don't get me wrong, because we we went through this. In, you know, in ECW, we felt the same way. Um, but it it gets to a point where you you have to tell yourself, I'm replaceable. Everybody's replaceable. If I'm gone, they'll fill that spot in two seconds, very easily. So you can't ride on your high horse you know, for, for that long and not think to yourself, man, I need to watch my P's and Q's because I could be out of here in a second because it can happen. And if Jack doesn't think he's replaceable, then he's got another thing coming. And he, again, he has not been in the business that long from what I understand. So I think one of the like, you know, um, 
vets need to sit him down and school him and tell him. Now, if he takes the advice and listens, that's one thing. But I heard from several different people, all those young guys, they don't listen to the older guys at all. Not at all. No. They'll be told something and they just let it fly right over their head or they'll run to Tony and complain about it. And, you know, Tony's like, yeah, you know, do what you want. Or he's not really, you know, putting his foot down and he needs to. So it's sad because yeah. they have something special here. And they proved that they can do stuff like this. Now they have to come back to the States, do it here, but they need the locker room to unite.